Hey, what is up, Spirit Gamers? Gamer Nate X here, aka Nate, and welcome back to the channel. So, um, for those of you that may not be aware, um, a year ago today, um, a year ago when this video goes out, um, was the Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary, well, the anniversary event that happened last year. And I'm sure a lot of us remember that trailer that came out last year. The trailer that I reacted to here on the channel. Um, oh yeah. I must say now that that trailer or that video that I reacted to is somewhat outdated. Like, um, or I should explain. Like, basically, this that video that I did was back... Well, that reaction I did on the channel, which of course was my first ever reaction I've done on this channel, um, was like my, that was back when I was like barely knew Kingdom Hearts. I think I only ever got to like Kingdom Hearts 2 or, um, I didn't play all the games yet. So yeah, I simply put, I didn't play all the games yet. So with that, I barely knew what was happening or barely knew what was shown in the trailers i think mostly the dark road stuff probably i knew about but even then i didn't know a whole lot going into the dark road trailer yeah and now i want to say that i know a lot more um since again back then i, I only had been playing kingdom hearts at the time like I, it was like four or five months i've been into kingdom hearts like, I only played Kingdom Hearts 1, um, Christmas 2021, um, after Sora came to Smash, and then, um, going into 2022, I've, been, I've played a few of the games and all that, yeah, and I didn't get too far with most of them, yeah, I didn't get too far in the series, so, yeah, most of the stuff that was shown in the trailer, like, I didn't really understand most of the stuff that was in it, so... Yeah, so there's likely things that I either miss, um, understood or whatever. So, yeah, basically this video is going to be an updated analysis on that trailer, and from what we've seen on that in that trailer. So, you know, the Dark Road stuff, Missing Link, and uh, of course Kingdom Hearts Four. So, um, this will be an update. Yeah, I'm basically going to do an updated analysis, sharing my thoughts and um, my, like, my overall, like, knowledge that I know about as of now. The things that I've learned over the year, over the past year, because, um, of course, I'm now a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. And now I'd say I'm a super fan at this point. Like, I've been playing the games, like, like a lot last year. Like, it like kingdom hearts basically consumed my life all of last year and uh um somewhat this year though of course i've been playing a lot of persona 5 and and then of course tears of the kingdom is coming out all that's good stuff but yeah kingdom hearts basically consumed my life last year and i've learned a whole lot last year within the franchise um i've yeah and i've technically still haven't finished melody of memory yet i haven't gotten that far in like union cross or dark road lore dark road lore either but uh, aside from that um i'm basically caught up with the series as of like most of melody of memory and of course kingdom hearts 3 and remind so um yeah but yeah this is let's so yeah basically what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be re-watching the trailer um, that I react the same trailer that I reacted to and you know just share my thoughts like overall updated thoughts and my updated opinions and stuff like that or whatever as a whole so you know I can update on the stuff that I learned over the years or, or rather over the past year as a and now that I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan so switch over here there we go so yeah, here we go. Yeah, the Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary trailer that was released a year ago. And I will not forget that I stood up late waiting for this trailer to drop. I woke up, funny story, like 
I woke up, I was awake, I stood up all night playing Kingdom Hearts and all that stuff, waiting for this trailer to drop. Like, I was up till 7 a.m. in the morning, and uh, as soon as I saw this trailer or I saw tweets or um, posts or whatever about this trailer, yeah, notifications, all that stuff. I went on YouTube, clicked on, <laughs> clicked on this trailer, uh, closed my iPad, and went right to sleep so that I could wake up and react to it first thing when I woke up. Yeah, that was definitely a night, to say the least. So, yeah, definitely I'm excited to see. Well, or rather, I'm excited to give my updated thoughts and stuff. Man, it's gonna be such. Uh, it's gonna be quite interesting revisiting this trailer, and uh, you know to see you know for what's in store with them, um, um, missing link, especially with missing link in Kingdom Hearts Four. Um, so without let's without having said that, let's um hop right into it. Let's hop into this. Man, so yeah, basically I'll be pausing. The, I'll be basically be pausing this at the certain moments. Yeah, so we first off we got the dark road stuff. I'm gonna lower this slightly. Okay, well, hang on. That's one thing. Uh, hang on, one thing's for sure. Let's rewind real quick. So these characters right here. Um, I will say up front that I have not yet, and I most likely will not play Dark Road. Uh, I don't see myself finishing it, um, since, um, like, I'm not a huge fan of the gameplay. I've, you know, I mostly had it auto-play for me, and I'm not, you know, I don't really see myself finishing Dark Road, since I'm not, I don't know. Like, I even made the joke with... Yeah, with my good friends, I'm um, Caleb, aka Kaleeb. Um, subscribe to him. Be sure to check out him out, and also my and also my friend Starlux. Um, my friends Caleb, Kaleeb, and Starlux. Um, I remember mentioning to them I would rather play Chain of Memories over Dark Road, just because I'm more familiar with Chain of Memories. I don't know. I mean, it's cart mechanic I'm more familiar with. But anyways, that's getting off track. So, yeah. Um, and it's really hard for me to remember most of these characters. Well, obviously, I know... Well, I know we have... Um, Xehanort right here. Ma young Xehanort and young Ericus. I mean, they were in Kingdom Hearts 3. They were... We've seen them in Kingdom Hearts 3. Young Xehanort, young Ericus. And then we've got... Um, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this name right. Braggy or Braggy. I don't know. Braggy. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm ever going to, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this name right. Yeah, I, yeah. So yeah, these characters, I remember Braggy. I'm not sure. I think that's his name, right? Braggy or Braggy. I don't know. Um, now here we have um Hermod Hermod um then um Erd um and Vor like yeah still don't know most of these characters like yeah these were like the six characters that you could play as or you could you, these are the six I'm guessing main characters from Dark Road if I'm not mistaken yeah because like I said I have not gotten that far in the lore of Union Cross or Dark Road, and I have not even played Union Cross, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I'm, these were like students or whatever. They these were like, I'm um, from what I can recall, um, they were like training or whatever. They were training at an academy, I guess, from what I recall. Yeah, I'm most likely gonna say things wrong because. I'm more familiar with the Missing Link in Kingdom Hearts 4 stuff than I am with the Dark Road stuff or the Dark Ro Road lore and all that. Yeah, they were training in um, Scala at Kylim. And yeah, 
That's all I'm aware of in this case. So yeah, I mean, yeah, who knows, I mean, yeah. and honestly, I'm going to be real here, I don't have too much to say about Union Cross, um, um, simply because I, like I said, I didn't get too far in the game, so, or, and too far in the lore, so, within the lore of it, so, oh, shoot, oh, never mind. But yeah, I don't know. So yeah, but this is the only thing I am aware of because this was in Kingdom Hearts 3, um, the chess game. Xehanort and Eric is playing the chess game. But yeah, so like, yeah. Um, also, one thing I gotta go say, I'm gonna go back. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right here. So, something I even learned, and then and I remember Starlux telling, well, without spoiling anything or anything. Um, like, I, I'll even say it, I kinda got spoiled on that. I don't know. Who would have thought. This guy right here is Lushu. And now I see what you're talking about, Starlux. I know. Now I understand. Like, I kind of got spoiled on that part. I kind of got a bit spoiled with um, who Lushu was over who Lushu was. So, yeah. Who would have thought that this guy right here was Lushu? Um... Yeah, along with, like, seriously, like, I thought Zigbar was Lushu. Who would have thought this guy was also Lushu? Like, who is this guy? I don't, like, I don't know. I have no idea. Like, man, that got me there. That seriously got me there. Um. So, yeah, so it looks like Zigbar and Bragi is Lushu. Man. So Lushu has like different, so I'm assuming Lushu has like different incarnations or something. And, and, and yeah, he has like different incarnations of himself. Yeah, I mean, he's Bragi in Dark Road and he's Zigbar. We find out that he was Zigbar, was Lushu at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, and yeah, who would have thought Lushu had different incarnations or different ooh, or different personas rather how should i say that um uh, should i say different personas i don't know so yeah but let's get into the stuff that i'm more so familiar with or i'm more hyped about so starting with um in, an unwritten era kingdom hearts missing link The game that I cannot wait for. Please be this summer. Also, um, some this is a new thing here. Yeah, this as I already mentioned before, I this cloaked figure right here, like, like prior to me knowing anything about Union Cross or. Or even watching the back cover movie, the key back cover movie, I always associated black coats with Organization 13. Yeah, prior to learning about Union Cross and all that, I always associated the black coat with Organization 13. So my immediate assumption is that this was an ancestor. I actually assumed that this was an ancestor 
of organization 13 and, and or one of the organization members an ancestor but it turns out that was not the case and it turns out that was wrong and in reality this is i'm mean, assume this is lushu i would think that's lushu after all i'm um, after all, as you can see here, we have his keyblade right here. Um, the gazing, the gazing eye, or no name, whatever it is, whatever the real name of this keyblade is called. Like seriously, gazing eye makes more sense. Like it, the gazing eye makes so much more sense. Like, look, you literally see an eyeball right there. There is literally an eye on the blade. Um, which I now know is the Master of Masters Eye. So, you know, the Master of Masters... The Master of Masters Eye is literally on the blade of this Keyblade. So, Gazing Eye just makes so much more sense than No Name. So, I, I don't know. But yeah, I'm aware that this guy is supposedly Lushu, if I'm not mistaken. This is most likely Lushu. Yeah, I don't know if we've gotten any confirmation on, I don't know if we have any confirmation on this character, on who this character is, I'm not 100% sure, but also, um, but yeah, also this statue right here, I've seen this guy in Kingdom Hearts 3, but I did not see the key back cover movie nor have I gotten into Union Cross or Dark Road at the time so I had no idea who this kid was other than a mystery boy that appeared during Kingdom Hearts 3 and now I know this kid's name or this guy's name is um Ephemer um yeah Ephemer and I see he's wielding the Master's Defender and yeah Ephemer he's like the new union leaders he's like yeah a new union leader um and he's was one of the yeah a notable mem keyblade wielder during union cross yeah i remember seeing him in the key back cover movie i remember seeing the scene where he was talking with um ava best character from union cross by the way um favorite character from union cross even yeah i remember the scene where Ephemer was talking with Alpha, um, and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, this guy is um Ephemer. Um, there's a statue of him, and if I don't know if I missed, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and of course, this is apparently. I remember well. Actually, I didn't even play Kingdom Hearts 3 yet. So now I know... Well, after playing Kingdom Hearts 3, I am now I now know that this is Scala and Kylum. And I'm assuming that this is an earlier version of Scala and Kylum. Like, like Scala and Kylum in its earlier days. Um, because the Scala and Kylum that, we, that we've all seen in Kingdom Hearts 3 and Kingdom... Yeah, yeah, by Kingdom Hearts 3 and I think Dark Road as well. Like, this is definitely di way different than the Scala and Kylum that we've seen in th Dark Road and Kingdom Hearts 3. Where, like, you know, that Eric, that Xehanort, Ericus, and company are inheriting. Like, uh, yeah, this is different from the Scala and Kylum that we see er Xehanort, Ericus, and company inhabiting. Like, with all the, with all those, like, the, with all the water and stuff like that. In, in Kingdom Hearts 3, where it was, like, all topsy-turvy, where we did the final boss with Master Xehanort, to where, you know, it was all topsy-turvy, upside down, and with Daybreak Town and everything. Yeah, I mean, this place was, like, all topsy-turvy by the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. So, yeah, I'm assuming that this is, like, an... Like Scala and Kylum in its earlier days, like in an, like in an older city, and like back in the olden days or the age of fairy tales. Um, yeah, like earlier version of Scala and Kylum. Yeah, that Ephemer and the F and company are inheriting before um, Zaynort and Ericus this time, or prior to 
Zaynor and Ericus this time. So yeah, an old, an earlier version of Scala at Kylum. The missing link. And man, seriously, just looking at this game, I cannot wait for this game to come out. Please be this summer. Like, like they already, like, you know what? We'll get into that. Yeah, please hope it's the summer. But man, seriously, the game looks so freaking amazing. Uh, this, and I'll even say this, I honestly think this is better. Well, comparing this to the gameplay of Union Cross, because I have watched the gameplay, like old footage of gameplay, like people playing Union Cross, um, old footage of Union Cross gameplay. And I will definitely say that the gameplay in Dark, in, no, in Missing Link, looks way more engaging it seriously looks like kingdom hearts mixed with pokemon go like and man like heck we're all like starlux kaleeb and i are like say are like saying can't wait imagine all of us to get gathering together to when missing link comes out we can battle a bunch of go out and battle heartless yeah, with the Pokemon Go mechanic feature that is included with um, in Missing Link. Oh man, seriously. And this game just. I seriously cannot wait to play this. Yeah, also, from what I'm seeing here. And I remember watching Kaleeb's analysis on this on this whole trailer. Since he couldn't watch it live, he had to do an analysis on it. He just reacted to it off camera and then did an analysis. But when he did his analysis video, um, he like mentioned these like stands or like trophies and stuff, like which is I would assume is a similar similar concept to union crosses like metals metal mechanic where you like just move move here move there use these like little metals to do your attacks which to me just i mean i don't know it felt eventually felt kind of like boring in a way i hope i don't offend anyone with that but it's like i don't know i feel like it got kind of old kind of quickly Seems kind of old to me. No. Yeah, but this honestly looks like a great option for a mobile game. This I would accept this as a mobile option. You know, seriously, I like I, I am speechless right now. But yeah, I'm assuming similar to collecting medals in Union Cross, and um, yeah, cards in Dark Road. Um. You get instead of medals, you get trophy stands or trophies um, of Kingdom Hearts characters to do your attacks and your magic. Um, who knows? But like, that's just an assumption. Oh, man. Man, the king of Corona. Man, seriously, the graphics look pretty good, even though this was the trailer revealing this. Oh, and also something worth noting here as we can see, we have multiplayer. Uh, we have multiplayer um, alongside. Yeah, making this the next Kingdom Hearts game to have multiplayer, from what I understand, alongside Days 358 over two days, Recoded, um, and Union Cross, to my knowledge. Those are the games that I'm aware had multiplayer. The Kingdom Hearts games that had multiplayer. Um, so yeah, this will be the next Kingdom Hearts game to have mul to feature multiplayer. So a multiplayer mode. Which I'm definitely hyped for. I can definitely... And this likely might be, end up being my first multiplayer Kingdom Hearts game I play. Because I have not played the original, like, Days or Recoded. I've not 
played them. I've only watched the movie version of them. So I am hoping to eventually soon, eventually play the game version of Days Encoded. Um, but yeah, like, and also I can't, obviously I can't play, really play Union Cross anymore. But unless they decide to remake the game, I would be surprised to see them do Reunion Cross. Um, if that's the title, if that becomes the official title, I don't know. But yeah, so... And also, I'll even go further. I should definitely say this. That this game literally looks like it could be made for consoles. It, or, or PC. This literally looks like... It could be played on PC. And in the same vein, I'm hoping for controller support for this game. Like, can both uh, controller support and who knows? It literally looks like it could be ported to PC at a later time. Um, so I'm, I am kind of hoping to see that. Um, but otherwise, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Also, um, this is uh, an interesting thing. I also didn't know who this guy was. So, apparently this guy is Brain. I know his name is Brain. He's, um, uh, yeah, Brain, right? Yeah, he's one of the new union, one of the union leaders along with, um, yeah, so we remember the statue of Ephemer we saw that Brain and Ephemer are like two union leaders. Apparently in Union Cross, they're like the two union lead, two new union leaders along with um, Ventus. Yeah, Brain is a, one of the new union leaders along with Ephemer, Ventus, Scald, and Lorium slash Mar Lorium slash aka Marluxia. So, and Lorium slash Marluxia, or Lorium aka Marluxia, so, yeah, he's one of the new union leaders, the Dandelions, so, uh, yeah, and I'm assuming, who knows what his role is going to be in Missing Link, I have no idea, so, I mean, yeah, yeah, Brain and... The other union leaders, the dandelions. Kingdom Hearts Missing Link. Yeah, and seriously. Like, I am desperately hoping that it comes out this summer. Please, I, we really need Missing Link. Like, Stalux and I cannot wait for Missing Link, and I'm sure Kaleeb can't as well. We all can't wait for Missing Link. We need Missing Link this summer, especially for, for when we get into the next topic, so that hopefully in September, when a particular event comes up, they can hopefully update us on, a per on the next game that we're going to be seeing right now. And now we get into the good stuff. The Lost Master Arc. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts 4, the Lost Master Arc. Yeah, and of course, also something worth noting that, well, after upon playing Melody of Memory, I'm aware that this is. Well, seeing Remind and playing Melody of Memory, I'm aware that the city is, um, Quadratum, obviously, Quadratum, which is, um, a Shibuya variant, a, um, world inspired by, um, the, inspired by Shibuya City in Japan, and it is the world of fiction, or the world of unreality. And, yeah, and all that good stuff. I don't know. Yeah, and this was the world that Sora, like, at the end, like, in Remind, in, at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, in the secret movie, and in dur and then during the secret episode, Falsus Rex, in the secret episode of Remind, um, this is where Sora ended up, apparently. 
This was the city that Sora and supposedly Riku ended up in. Uh, yeah, and where we fought Yazora, um, the greatest super boss of all time. Uh, I'll leave a link below. I even recently uploaded a video um, on Yazora, me battling him. The pro codes definitely check out that video. I'll leave a link I'll, and I'll put it up in the cards um, if you want to check it out. Um, I did it on stream, but anyways, yeah, this is Quadratum, um, the city that Sora wound up in, and man, seriously, it looks so good in this trailer, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Your heart resides within the soul. Man, seriously. These graphics, like, seriously, look at these graphics, man. Like, these graphics just look so freaking dope as heck. Like, in, this looks just so real, so realistic. Oh, and also, hang on a second. Something worth pointing out here. Uh, if I, I'll just, hang on, hang on, hang on. If you can notice in the, I remember seeing this in Caleb's video, um, and I'm sure a lot of people as well, for a lot of people, you notice this thing right here, this thing right here, this led, this apparently led to the leak and the rumors that apparently, apparently, a lot of people are speculating Star Wars that Star Wars might be in Kingdom Hearts 4. Um, I don't know much about Star Wars and I can't say what this is or where this comes from from Star Wars, but yeah, apparently people are assuming Star Wars is going to be in Kingdom Hearts 4, which I honestly think would be neat. That would be a neat concept. I even remember seeing a mod of someone, someone mo made a mod where Sora was fighting Darth Vader. Um, they replaced Xemnas with Darth Vader, which I think was a pretty neat mod. And I think Star Wars and Kingdom Hearts would definitely be an an interesting concept. Would be pretty interesting. You know, I mean, especially because Disney does technically own Star Wars now. So, yeah, so that would be neat. It would be pretty neat. And heck, it would be the only reason I would ever watch Star Wars. Because I've never seen the movies. And also, I'll take this time to say, there are actually... Four movies, about well, three movies, technically. Three Disney movies that I have not seen that were in Kingdom Hearts 3 that I have not technically seen. And one of them, but one of them I'm not 100% sure on. First is Pirates of, the Carib Pirates of the Caribbean. I have not seen any of the Pirates movies. Um, then we got Tron and Tron Legacy. I have not seen Tron or Tron Legacy. And the last one, I'm not 100% sure if I've seen it or not. I don't, probably don't remember is Hunchback of Notre Dame. I'm not 100% sure if I remember seeing it or not. Maybe it was super, such a long time ago that I don't remember, but I do not recall watching Hunchback of Notre Dame. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, these, so it would be great to see Star Wars, and it would be the only reason I ever watched the Star Wars movies. Um, yeah, it would be a huge surprise. choice is yours once more and oh my gosh yo no seriously seriously oh my goodness kingdom hearts for sora sora looks so freaking good in this game i i always loved kingdom hearts one sora's design like Kingdom Hearts 1 Sora has always been, like, my, well, de design-wise my favorite. And design and outfit-wise, along with Caleb. Um, and honestly, the Destiny trio as a whole, Sora, Riku, and Kairi, I loved all three of them in their Kingdom Hearts 1 designs. But this right here, I th honestly, and also I'll even 
and kingdom hearts 3 was also great kingdom hearts 3 i think is the second favorite designs for the three for sora riku and kairi the kingdom hearts 3 designs well except riku riku looked better in kingdom hearts 2 but anyways i'm getting off track but yeah i gotta say the second i saw sora in this trailer like i instantly loved his design like seriously just like wow like seriously kingdom hearts like cage for sora looks freaking incredible like like he legit looks like he doesn't even look like he's from kingdom hearts he l flat out looks like final fantasy this 100 percent flat out looks like final fantasy it looks like final fantasy and not kingdom hearts like so yeah he literally legit looks like he was literally looks like he came out of final fantasy looks like a final fantasy character right here looks final fantasy ish <laughs> oh, man seriously like i think this might just be my new favorite design for sora yeah like kingdom hearts 1 has been my favorite design for sora a while but at least i think it was prior to kingdom hearts 4 because cage for sora looks incredible <laughs> man oh and also also here we have another character that i learned about recently or sometime after seeing this trailer yeah i had no idea who this character was so apparent so i'm now i'm aware that this girl is oh oops so i now know that this girl's name is strelitzia 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 i'm not sure yeah strelitzia he and that she is um marluxia or lorium rather yeah strelitzia she's lorium's younger little sister or younger sister yeah i'm aware she's lorium's younger sister that um was killed there and was unfortunately killed in the events of union cross um yeah lorium's sister that got killed during that eventually died and was killed during union cross um yeah and i'm like believe me if had i known who this character was and i now i'm understand why people are like what is strelitzia doing here like like cause she died like she died at, um in union cross so like is she, like and apparently strelitzia is here and she's still alive like okay however so like is leads to the assumption is this like like the afterlife or something i don't know but yeah yeah, Quadratum. It's a world full of life. And this is an interesting thing. But for you and I, it's similar to an afterworld, I suppose. So that leads to the thing, the big question. Sora... We, I mean, obviously Strelitzia died. I know Strelitzia died. So does that mean Sora's dead? Does that mean Sora's dead? Like, like, is it confirmed that Sora's dead or something? Like, I have no idea. Like, you know. Hmm. Oh, man. Seriously, the game looks so good. Oh, and then we are introduced to this insane looking dark side. Oh, man. Oh, Sora, there you go. Oh, man.
Oh man, seriously. And I think this has to be my favorite moment in this from this trailer. Like the way that he runs and just summons his keyblade is just insane. Like that literally looks like as I remember Caleb said, that looks like an opening cutscene. <laughs> Legit looks like it could be used in an opening cutscene. And of course we get the gameplay, the pre-rendered gameplay right here. But seriously, like this literally looks like um, Okay, I'm I, I'm aware that this gameplay is pre-rendered. However, if you compare this to Kingdom Hearts 3's um, announcement trailer back in 2013, if you compare this gameplay to that gameplay from the trailer, it, this trailer looks way more finished. It looks just looks further in development and looks more. This legit almost looks like it could be in the final product. I'm not saying it will be, but it looks more further in development. Whereas, um, um, Kingdom Hearts 3, the gameplay barely even counted. It looked like gameplay. It looked scripted and looked more scripted and all that. So, yes, I definitely say that the gameplay that was shown here looks more finished or whatever. I don't know. Or more, yeah, more further in development. Hmm. Man. Man, the chain whip. They're using the chain as a whip. And the flow motion. Man, all that movement and flipping around. Oh, man. And also reaction commands from Kingdom Hearts 2 coming back. Man, seriously. So many things that I cannot wait for this game. And also... A little something I'm um, before I forget here. Um, apparently, from what I recall, looking at the command menu right here, this one of these characters, one of these Japanese characters right here, says "build" um, is "build and scrap," um, which I don't know what that's for, but it'll be. I'm not 100% sure what that means, but I'm definitely um, looking forward to what this is going to bring to the table. I don't know what the mechanic will be, but definitely looking forward to seeing what this build mechanic will be for, if it is in fact in the final product. Man, the game looks so good. These graphics are just so sick. If you do leave this world, don't expect to return to the one from which you came. Also, um, these two cloaked figures right here. My first th thing I thought is that these were surviving members of Organization 13. Like, like I saw Lucio at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3 and thought he was... Um, I only knew he was part of Organization 13, so I thought well, one of these characters was Zigbar, which is... Technically correct in quotations because um Zigbar and all that. Yeah, I thought these two were surviving organization 13 members, but then uh further understanding that isn't the case because organization 13 was taken down. Um and they are part of the Dark Seeker saga, so yeah. Um whereas so now I know that these two cloaked figures right here. One of them is Lushu, um, who, you know, meaning Z Zigbar is technically correct in quotations. Um, but yeah, because we all know Zigbar is Lushu. So, it's really Lushu. So, one of these characters is, one of these figures is Lushu. And then the other one uh, is the Master of Masters. Yeah, the Master, so it's the Master of Masters and Lushu. I seriously don't know why Lushu is even cloaked. I mean, we already know who he is, in quotations. Um, yeah, so like, I have no idea. But also, this line right here. Um, don't expect, if you do leave this world behind, 
don't expect to return to the one from which you came like here's my question here is does this mean Sora's just never gonna get back home to destiny islands like is, yeah like is Sora just never gonna get back home to destiny islands like like I, I know he can't bring himself back home since he is after all he lost the power of waking so yeah he did lose the power of waking so i'm aware he lost the power of waking so he can't bring himself back home um um yeah it's like is it like sora like boy you will have your life but it will never it won't ever be the life you once had it will always be something new something different um yeah it's like man like kingdom hearts one he left his island Kingdom Hearts 2, he finally returned. He is to return to his island. And then Kingdom Hearts... Between the end of Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3 and all that, he had to leave the island again. And in Kingdom Hearts 4, he ends up lost in another world. Uh, so, like, yeah, is he just never going to make it back home? Man, that would just be sad. That would be... I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that um, from the end of Missing Link, or no, no, Melody of Memory, like from the end of Melody of Memory, I'm aware that Riku is going to be here as well. And, uh, you know, that Riku's supposedly going to be here as well, looking for Sora. Um, which is why I'm like surprised we didn't see Riku in this trailer. And also, why? Surprised that we didn't see Yazora in this trailer. Surprised we didn't see Yazora in this trailer either. Like, we see Yazora in the secret movie, and like, we see him in Toy Box, we see him in the secret movie, and he was the secret boss in the Remind DLC. Like, how, how is it that they included him? Like, in those, in those moments in Kingdom Hearts 3, but he's not here in you know what's for i mean i'll cut them slack and this is the first trailer so the first official trailer for kingdom hearts 4 so i'll cut the slack there but yeah yeah i don't know it's just weird i know a lot of people are like where's yazora like where's riku and yazora yeah because we all know riku's gonna be right definitely hope we see Kingdom Hearts 4, Cage 4, or Quadronum Riku. I definitely want to see Quadronum Riku. Because we all know, we already know Riku's going to be here. And hopefully we can see Yazora and, like, see what he looks like in Kingdom Hearts 4. Definitely can't wait. I mean, Sora already looks so good. Can't wait to see what Riku and Yazora look like. And man, the new titles, the new... The new logo or the new icon. Man, the new icon. Marking a new chapter, a brand new chapter and a new a new era for the kingdom a brand new era for the Kingdom Hearts franchise. The Lost Masters arc. Yeah. And also something worth noting here. You what do we see here? For those of you that are assuming that Kingdom Hearts is no longer going to be Disney. What do we see here? D I clearly see Disney. It says Disney. Disney is one. So, for those of you that, for people that assume or worry that Kingdom Hearts is no longer going to be Disney. That's not going to happen. Kingdom Hearts is Disney. 100%. Disney owns Kingdom Hearts 100% legally. 100% it's 100% legally copyright owned Disney. Copyright owned by Disney. Like if they have the dis if you see the Disney like um logo or icon whatever right here, see Disney licensing right here, then it's definitely owned by Disney. So yeah, and if let's just put it like this, if Kingdom Hearts wasn't owned by Disney, then it wouldn't be Kingdom Hearts. It would not be Kingdom Hearts anymore. So, yeah. 
just because we don't see that many Disney characters doesn't mean it's not going to be owned by Disney. It is still owned by Disney, hands down. And as proof, who do we see here? Donald and Goofy. So there you go. Disney characters. We still have... Man. And of course, apparently, it looks as if they're looking for Hades, supposedly. Man. Magic in the making. So, yeah. Yeah, that is basically my full analysis. Seriously? You know, that's basically my full analysis on this video or on this trailer. Like, seriously. I cannot believe I'm learning some... I cannot believe I'm learning so much about this over the past year, and I'm still learning about this stuff to this day. Um, been like... You know, still need to catch up with Miss with no with Union Cross and Dark Road lore. Um, I've been streaming Kingdom Hearts. Um, definitely be sure to check out the marathon series. I'll leave it in the cards. I'll put my first episode in the cards. Hopefully, episode two will be out this Friday. I'm hoping to upload episode two very soon. Maybe this Friday. I don't know. And uh, yeah. Definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, this and this was from a year ago today, which is why I'm desperately hoping that Missing Link comes out this summer. So maybe sometime after, some, sometime after Tears of the Kingdom. I am desperately hoping that Missing Link comes out sometime this summer, June, July, August. I don't care. Sometime this summer, so that come in September. At D23, that Kingdom Hearts 4 can get an update. Because a lot of people are assuming that Kingdom Hearts 4 is going to come out um, in 10 years or whatever. Because of Kingdom Hearts 3. But you have to keep in mind though. Kingdom Hearts 3, like, they had to change engines. So, they had to change engines midway through. Midway through development. So... You know, hence why it took longer for Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, I, I'm con fairly confident that this game should come out anywhere between late 2024 or 2025. Most likely 2025, the latest. You know, because there's n n no... I doubt they're going to make us wait, like, that long. Like, as long as they did made us wait for Kingdom Hearts 3... You know, since after all, this is the beginning of a new era for Kingdom Hearts. I'm sure they don't want to make us wait that long to start the, a new, the, this new chapter for the Kingdom Hearts franchise. So, yeah, definitely hyped it. And also, Nomura did say that, did say E3, but E3 was canceled this year. And it was canceled this year as well as last year. So, Nomura, no excuses. If you, like, our last hope, or whatever, like, our last hope, literally our last hope here to getting Kingdom Hearts updates is D23. Is D23. They, um, you know, they need to show us an update on Kingdom Hearts 4 ASAP. So, heck, think about it like this. Going into 2024, they can give continuous updates, maybe showing, like, assuming they... Hopefully, update Kingdom Hearts 4, give an update on Kingdom Hearts 4 at D23. Like, they can give and well, they can show what consoles or whatever, what system or platform it's going to be on, which hopefully it's also on PC along with PS5 and Xbox Series X, like next gen consoles and PC. Um, also, uh, hopefully, yeah, it'll have an estimate, at least have an estimate release date, at at the very least an estimate release date. Um, no, because like, even if they have to delay it for a year, for one more year, I'm fine with that. Like, after all, Kingdom Hearts 3 was, I'm somewhat fine with that, because after all, they had to delay Kingdom Hearts 3 for one year. It was originally going to be 2020, or 2018, but then they moved it to 2019. Delayed it to 2019, so 
if it was just a minor delay, I'm fine with that. But at least give us an estimate release date. Um, so then we can all be hyped up. If, if so, if it is to release in 25th, 2025, which I think is definitely the most possible potential release date year or release year or whatever, then, um, you know, then going into 2024, they can give continuous updates on Kingdom Hearts 4, show off a few worlds and stuff. I have complained about them showing off too many, too much stuff, especially in that final battle trailer. Just so stupid. But look, I like I could care less. But at the very least, don't spoil too much. Like Nomura and Square Enix, please shut the spoilers up. Like we do not care. We do not need to see any endgame stuff. Like you know, just show us, just show us a few worlds, or heck, if anything, if you have to, all the worlds, if you have to, just show us what worlds are gonna be in the game, and maybe some updated extra gameplay, and that's it. Um, yeah, don't show us too much, so that we can see the game, um, when it comes out. Hopefully 2024, late 2024, 2025. Yeah, so anyways, that's probably going to do it for this video. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this analysis video. Um, this update analysis um, towards Kingdom Hearts. You know, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Please, hopefully that missing link comes out this summer. And as I said, hopefully it's this summer and hopefully we'll get an update on Kingdom Hearts 4 soon. And definitely looking forward to both of these games. Um, if you enjoyed the video, consider um, consider liking the video. Also, subscribe to the channel. Be sure to subscribe. Um, click the bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future uh, videos. I am slowly starting to upload more on my YouTube channel. So, definitely consider... Um, subscribing you don't want to miss out on this stuff also be sure to follow me on twitch as i'm streaming as i've been streaming there pretty much regularly um the, i'll leave the link in the description below twitch.tv slash spirit gamer nate x i'll be streaming a lot of um, age of calamity as well as persona 5 royal and kingdom hearts of course so definitely be sure to follow me on twitch i'm almost an affiliate and also, be sure to follow my socials, Instagram and TikTok, for any updates like posts and shorts and all that stuff. All that stuff, you know the deal. Um, and as a friendly reminder to anyone that watched to the end, as a friendly reminder, I am doing a fundraiser for Autism Speaks this month. Going um, from in this fundraiser, fundraiser ends. Uh, May 11th um, so um, consider donating do not feel obligated to donate do not feel obligated to donate it, but even a, every little bit counts or helps a good cause so um, for autism awareness month so definitely consider donating you don't have to feel obligated but yeah so yeah just want to remind everyone on that I hope you all enjoyed the video and until next time this is GamerNateX signing off. Hope you have a good day and take care and God bless.